so welcome back we are discussing uh, final state machine plus data path controller plus data path and we were uh, discussing a particular example of greatest common divisor computation iterative computation and we had discussed the data outline the data path its corresponding verilog description and the controller uh, for that which turned out to be a single which to begin with we designed a purely combinational controller we found a bit of deficiency in that in, in the sense that uh, the start signal was having too much priority as long as the start signal was high the system was not at all proceeding to the computations uh, so then we outlined uh, if once we if we change the protocol uh, so that we can respond to the start signal as soon as possible then we'll have to uh, we'll need extra states and the controller will be a, a more genuine a multi state finite state machine okay instead of a purely combinational uh, controller so let's uh, quickly review that and discuss it further so the data path for gcd just to consolidate the picture in your mind we'll repeat uh, it quickly draw it bit more neatly this is the x register which is uh, driven by output of a multiplexer and that this multiplexer is controlled by an output of a controller with the signal load x in and when this load x in is asserted the uh, input from the external sources x in is loaded into the register x this is the clocked register okay otherwise if load x in is zero then the input to uh, x x is going to be loaded with something that would depend on whether swap is asserted or not if swap is asserted x is to be loaded with y if swap is deasserted x is to be loaded with something called x minus y which is the result of arithmetic logic unit which subtracts y from x okay this is the same y which is going over here coming from somewhere else this is x which is coming from over here that's a picture for how uh, how x gets loaded either from x in when load x in is high or if when load x in is not high it will be loaded from either y or the result of this alu x minus y depending on whether we swap or not so correspondingly this is y why there is a multiplexer here and again that multiplexer is similarly similar to that for x is going to be controlled by a control input in output from the controller which is input to the data path say load y in and when that uh, load y in is asserted y in which is the in, uh, input ready at the port of this gcd module is going to be loaded into this clock register otherwise like in this case y is going to be loaded either with depending on swap either with uh, x or with y okay we also require uh, a comparator and a zero checker right other than this a comparator will need to compare x and y and tell us with indicate to us through this signal whether x is less than y and a zero checker is going to look at y whether y is zero or not and tell us whether y is equal to zero or not okay this y is coming from over here i guess this is slightly neater diagram for the data path we have shown all the data path components that we require So now 
we had started working i mean on the protocol like uh, where the start signal is quickly responded to and that required a use of a state called state idle in which the system is kind of waiting for the start signal to uh, be asserted and when start is not asserted stay in this state once the start signal is asserted then the system in the next clock cycle would move to a state st loop okay but uh, before it uh, by the end of the current cycle before it moves to the state load x in load y in would have been asserted by the controller so as to ensure that at the end of this particular clock cycle while moving from uh, state idle to state loop x in and y in would be loaded into x and y okay so uh, at the beginning of the clock cycle when the system has moved to state loop x and y have been loaded with input values okay so now we are ready to compute then uh, we'll check so th this is where the system will reside for a few more clock cycles as long as we have interesting x and y inputs in the beginning of every clock cycle this will check whether y is equal to 0 or not either y is 0 or y is not 0 so if y is 0 then we know that computation is over the controller asserts the ready signal which is the output of that controller and goes back to the idle state so that it is ready for uh, like in taking in the next input x in and y in into x okay if y is not equal to 0 then we are still ha still have some work to do and that would exactly what to do it will depend on whether x is less than y or whether x is not less than y okay in, in this case a swap signal will be asserted and in the next clock cycle we again go to this the same state where we will behave will the actions of the system data path would be again dependent on x y equal to 0 or x less than y and so on. So, we will go back to this state we still have some more computation to do. If x is not less than y then we do not swap and in the next clock cycle we go back to this state. So, this is the state diagram that we have arrived at. Okay. To make this unambiguous or like to connect this up or correlate this with Verilog uh, to understand the Verilog uh, semantics and synthesis process it would be instructive to uh, write the Verilog code for this controller. Note that data path has not changed. Okay. So, just the controller changing and with the help of that change in the controller we are being able to implement a different protocol of uh, the way we respond to start signal and uh, so on. So, so, the very log for generation of this uh, uh, I mean uh, like uh, the state machine. So, first let me describe the state transition logic. St state transition is taking place at the triggering edges of the clock that is say pause edge or positive edge of the clock. Okay. So, uh, it is typically is going to be described using a case statement depending on what the current state is we have different cases. The current state is state idle then we stay in the same state as long as start is 0, but if start becomes 1 start is asserted then in the next clock cycle we will be ready to move to state state loop. Okay. Else we stay this is not required else we stay back in the same state state idle. Okay. That is how we respond while we are in the state idle. So, the transition in the next clock cycle we will move to state loop if start has been found to be asserted like in a st and stable at the end of this clock cycle and otherwise we stay back in this uh, loop. So, this is corresponding to this particular picture if start is asserted we are going to move to st state loop if start is not asserted we are going to stay back in this state. 
Now, the logic if the system is in state loop, okay, the state transition logic not the logic for generation of the control signal that will describe in a separate always block. So, here it would depend on whether first will the system will look at the status signal y equal to 0, okay, which is coming from the data path. This controller system will look at y equal to 0. If y is equal to 0, then we know that next state we are going to move to is idle state. So, waiting for next triggering next trig trigger for the system to start. Okay. Else, else the computation would depend on whether x is less than y or x, uh, x is not less than y, but the next state is going to be the same. Okay. You notice that although in this diagram we have uh, you know if y is not equal to 0 we have this for two further situations with x less than y or x not less than y, but that is for the output control signals okay, control signals which are being generated by this controller, but the next state is going to be independent of whether this or this next state is going to be ST loop. So, as far as next state logic is concerned state transition logic is concerned this is sufficient uh, to say this. In fact, this is also redundant because this wedlock semantics will tell us uh, tell the synthesizer that uh, the system the next in the next clock cycle we are staying back in this state. So, this would have been similar to this this else block is also redundant. Okay, but just for clarity we are I am putting it here. What else these are the only two states right we have completely cap captured how the transitions take place. Okay, uh, but for completing the def case statement we have to have some default and in which we really do not care, but just to be on the safer side we say that if some funny situation is there unanticipated uh, like you know unclear values on, on the states signal then we move to state idle. So, this this very log uh, code fragment captures the state transition logic. Now, the logic uh, for generating the control signal is also typically uh, described using always block. Okay. So, this is the lo output logic output of So, the outputs of FSM the, uh, the control signals to the data path and also a signal ready which is uh, output of this GCD subsystem. Okay. So, this is uh, combinational logic. Okay. So, this will is going to depend purely on what the current state is and within that depending on current state you also look at the current input values to the controller which will be the signals uh, x less than y or signal y equal to 0 and so on. Okay. So, so, we have to uh, specify what will be the control signals. The, the control signals are load x in I like in the case for sing this uh, con purely combinational controller which we seen in the last class I use the default uh, values I said a default load x in to 0 load y into 0 swap to 0 ready to also 0 and here I am only, only going to show the non default values. So, if I am the state idle then only when start signal is asserted, we will be doing something to this uh, like the load x in and load y in signals will be asserted. So, load x in will be 1, load y in will be 1 okay. and we would have moved to that state state loop as described in the 
other always block which is the state transitional description. So, nothing else as far as uh, the output signals are concerned in state idle. State loop, let us look at the diagram for state loop. In state loop, the output signals will depend on whether y is equal to 0, then the ready signal will be asserted and if y is not equal to 0, it would depend on whether x is less than y or x is not less than y. So, if y equal to 0, then ready is 1, else if x less than y, then swap is 1, else swap is at the default value 0. Okay. Okay, sorry, the default is also required, but default whatever. So, I do not care really end case. So, I could just have an empty st statement here, let the default values remain as it is. Okay. So, using the blocking assignments and using uh, specifying the defaults early enough and specifying only non default values in this block of code, I have completely described a purely combinational logic for generation of output. Okay. And this logic depends on the current state as well as the current inputs to the controller, which are in start y equal to 0, x less than y. All the signals are playing a part in, in deciding the values, output values of this controller, which are some of them are input to the data path, some of them are output to the external world. Yeah, so, having seen the GCD example quite uh, like you know and a variation of that to illustrate the like need for typical need for a multi state finite state machine rather than purely combinational controller. Uh, I will just for a change we will move to a different example of again of FSM plus data path and it is a very simple example where the uh, the concept of multiple state will again be evident, but in a different context with a different mood, uh, requirement. Okay. So, this is the example of uh, simple binary multiplication, uh, where let us ignore this, uh, let us assume that the numbers are positive, non negative or positive numbers and uh, we are going to multiply them using uh, very simple the school grade multiplication system adapted for binary multi uh, numbers. So, let us say the numbers are this is number 13 in binary this is number 5 the result should be 65. Let us say the way uh, this computation is done is uh, as follows. The shift, uh, the so called shift add approach, shift and add algorithm, which is very easy to hardwire, and that is what we are going to see it as a FSM plus data path uh, is as follows. So, we are going to maintain an accumulator where the multiplication will accumulate, that accumulator will be initialized to, uh, it will be suf sufficiently big accumulator capable of storing the product, this is x and this is y. Input x and y have been stored into registers x and x in and y in have been assumed to be stored in registers x and y at the start of this uh, computation. Okay. Of course, the, some of this register especially ac accumulator is going to be changing, x will not be changing, x is going to be repeatedly added y will be changing because we are going to look at the bits of y one by one. Okay. So, uh, assume that y is going to be put in some kind of shift register, so that uh, which which will be shifting left one bit at uh, per cycle at a time. Okay. So, the algorithm is as follows, it looks at this particular MSB of y, this is the, okay, let us say, let me call this, this is MSB of y, it happens to be 0 because of that what we are going to do is 
simply shift since since m s b y is 0 just shift ok. So, what happens shift the accumulator. So, the accumulator is going to be again shift and load accumulator ok. We also for the next clock cycle we will we will also pop out this particular MSB of Y. So, we will say shift Y register to left ok. So, this is these are the actions we will be taking in this clock cycle. So, at the end of the clock cycle Y would have been because of this control signal Y register would have been sh shifted left. So, this MSB would have been popped out new MSB would most MSB stands for most significant bit we will be looking at this particular bit in the next clock cycle. Accumulator would be loaded with the shifted version of the current accumulator just shift ok and load accumulator. So, here there is no difference it is going to be zeros, all zeros. ok. X is going to be as it is in the next clock cycle because of the shift y left we are going to see 1 0 1 and 0. So, note that the 0 is the 0 was this particular 0 trailing 0 is not part of the original input and we are going to keep track of this with the help of a counter. So, I am not missed it out here, but assume that there is a counter which is keeping track of how many iterations we are progressing we have progressed to. In the next clock ci cycle when in the, in the beginning of the clock cycle we have this situation y shifted accumulator has been loaded with the shifted version of that ok, but now we have an interesting situation the MSB MSB is 1 since MSB of y is 1 is 1 we say shift and add ok load accumulator with the result of the adder and also pop out y by shifting that register to left. So, now what we get is to the accumulator uh, we uh, like you know accumulator is loaded again with the shifted version plus shift plus add. So, that is 0 plus 1 1 0 1. So, this is going to be the new accumulator x is going to be as it is and in the next clock in the beginning of the next clock cycle we will have this ok the MSB will be 0 again ok MSB of y will be 0. So, now since MSB is since this therefore accumulator is going to be just loaded with a shifted version of it no addition will take place we will also be shifting y to left and let me also uh, space something that missed out earlier we will also be decrementing counter the counter which is going to keep track of how many iterations we have progressed. So, in the earlier steps also I should specify that uh, decrement count decrement count ok. So, all this kind of uh, actions are being uh, signals are being generated uh, appropriate additions are being done some at appropriate times shifting is being done loading accumulator is being done ok. So, because of this what we are going to get in the accumulator is shifted version of 1101 ok. What uh, x is not changing at all, but y is going to be now shifted further and for the last iteration we see that particular uh, the last bit of y as the MSB now. Remember the y was 0101. 0, 1. So, this is we are in the last iteration. Now, because MSB is high MSB is of y is 1. 
So, therefore, accumulator is going to be loaded with the shifted version plus x okay. and then at the same time uh, we will instruct the shift register for y to shift to left and to instruct the counter to decrement. Now, what is the result that is going to be at the end of the clock cycle in the accumulator is going to be uh, this shifted by 1, 1 bit plus this particular number 1101. So, let us calculate that. So, 110100 0, 0, 0, and uh, this further 20, this is the 8 bit accumulator and 1101. So, we get 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0. So, what we end up here is 0 1 0 0 1 and y would be now all zeros. Okay. Note that counter would have decremented to 0. Now, we know that we have done 4 iterations okay, which are the 4 iterations iteration number 1, iteration number 2, 3 and 4. Okay. At the end of this 4 iterations, we should have, we, we expect to have the result in accumulator. About this result is 64 plus 1, this is 65 in decimal. Okay. So, it is exactly what we expected it to be 13 multiplied by 5, 65, okay. because this is 13 and y was 0101, 0, 1, that is 5. Right. So, we have this correct description of uh, simulation of this particular shifted add based algorithm. So, its data path is going to be quite simple. So, it is quite instructive to look at this as an other example, another example of FSM plus data path. So, what is the data path? So, what do we expect? We definitely require an adder, okay. we require a shift register for what? Shift register for y, we require a multiplexer, I mean most likely in most cases we require there is a role for multiplexers, there is a role for ALU we will see exactly we require a counter for keeping track of the count for updating the count what else do we require in this algorithm accumulator okay a register several registers uh, one shift register for y and registers for appropriately big register for accumulator and for x x is in fact constant. So, we might be able to optimize it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so, let us start like you know placing these components and wiring them up. So, here is a big accumulator. This is a clocked register. I call it this accumulator. This accumulator is going to be taking at times just a shifted version of itself or the result of the ALU addition. Okay. So, when it takes the shifted version of itself, it is like we will regard it as as if it is the adder is adding 0 to it. Okay. So, uh, in the case of shift and add, we will be passing this accumulator's content through a 1 bit shifter and putting it at this adder and the other input to the adder is going to be either x which is stored in this register x a clock register either x or it could be 0.
So, this uh, this will depend on uh, whether we say whether the controller says shift and add. Okay. If the controller says only shift that means, shift add add is 0 then 0 will uh, be sent to this adder and uh, then it will have this simply the effect of loading updating the accumulator with its shifted left shifted version. Okay. Note that this is not a shift register this is a simple shifter combinational shifter. Okay. So, in the inventory of uh, data path very typically we re require shifters combinational. In general a barrel shifter is very useful component very efficient in general one uses barrel shifter a very important a typical component of uh, useful data paths. Okay. Here we have a simple shift a combinational shifter which is only shifting by one bit. We also require a counter again a, a synchronous clock uh, system whose output is being used like you know and which is being instructed which is being told uh, which can be instructed to decrement and so on. And uh, we will be interested in seeing whether this count has reached 0 or not whether this count is 0 or not 0 checker we will use here count equal to 0. Okay. What else do we require in this algorithm in the data path shift and add we will come back to it. Okay. So, this looks like this is more or less what we require we require a controller now. So, controller for shift add uh, based multiplier. So, now again we see that we are very typically going to have one state in which the system will stay for long enough time knows what to do depending on the status signal generated by the uh, by the data path itself. The controller will use those status signals generated by data path and like decide on the control signals to be input to to drive the data path again. So, looking at a status signal which the controller generates the control signals to the data path and that state I denoted by typical state loop which is where the majority of the work is going to happen. Most of the cycle the system would stay in this state and uh, what are the actions the outputs would depend on what the inputs are. So, the most important input to the controller is uh, as we can see there is a control signal shift and add to decide whether to shift and add and anything else it will a lot will depend on whether the count is 0 or not as well as whether the yeah we missed one thing right m s the y s the shift register for y. and this is the MSB and assume that this is the shift register. Okay. So, the MSB of Y the most significant by bit of the shift register is going to be of crucial importance and based on that uh, actions will be decided. If MSB of Y is non-zero and if MSB of Y is 0, these are the two possibilities. If MSB of Y is non 0, then the we are going to go back in this, yeah, actually, we missed uh, the important uh, the import the count whether count is equal to 0 or not, even has even higher priorities. So, this will not work.
So, quickly like from this state, we check whether count is 0 or not. If count is has dropped down to 0, we know that this computation is finished. Okay. Let us see what to do, whether to go back to this state or not. This is important, this is when the computation continues. If count is not 0, then it would depend on whether m s b is of y is non 0 or whether m s b of y is 0. Okay. If m s b of y is non 0, then we know that uh, not only we have to shift, but also add x. So, we generate a assert a control signal shift add to the data path. Okay. We should also be decrementing the count, right? We should also be loading loading the accumulator with the result of the adder. So, enable accumulator to load itself and one more control signal will be shift y to left. So, all these control signals are asserted. So, that uh, the uh, multiplexer lets the x go through to the adder. So, that x is added with uh, the shifted version of the accumulator and the result uh, and count is decremented. The result of the adder is loaded into the accumulator and y is shifted left. So, all this uh, with the help of this control signals at the end of this current clock cycle appropriate uh, data path operations data uh, will happen okay and then we go back to this state okay on the other hand if msb of y is zero then we only we don't shift and we don't add so which is like so it does not mean that we don't shift it simply means that we don't add so th this signal is deasserted because we have decided to use a signal with the name shift add as the input is multiplexer. If shift add is 1, then we let x go through. If shift add is 0, then we let 0 be added. That means, it has the effect of only shifting. Okay. So, shift add is deasserted when m s b is uh, 0, but we still have to decrement counter, uh, decrement count enable the accumulator for loading and shift the y register shift register left by 1 bit okay. and we go back to this state. Okay. Now, let us come to this particular uh, situation when count was found to be 0. So, should we what are the uh, control signals to be generated or control or some output signals to be generated and which state do we go to next. So, if like in the single state GCD controller, if we are tempted to go back to this state, then uh, what would happen is that the computation would have been finished, but uh, nothing would stop from this uh, like shifting of uh, accumulator and all that to happen, because uh, this system will keep reacting to might react to uh, like the date uh, about the value of y is msby y is 0 or not it might uh, might in, uh, change the contents of accumulator so which is what we don't desire so we want the system to freeze the freeze the results in the accumulator in fact that, fortunately that was not a concern in the single cycle because once y becomes 0 then in deep, even if swapping and uh, even if that uh, like subtract operation happens continues to happen x does not get changed because x minus y still happens to be the same as the old x. In this case like you know this, this accumulator contents might get shifted corrupted and so on. So, that is why we want the system to freeze when count becomes 0. So, we will go to a we will make the controller go to a state called state done okay, and stay there until the next trigger. So, here uh, I am just like just avoiding the role of the idle state and all that. There is no, uh, I mean, you know, you, you can enhance this particular FSM with with some some more states for appropriate protocol of start triggering the computation of like indicating readiness readiness of the result 
and so on. But essentially the main part core part of the FSM is this. Here I am just illustrating that I do not want I do not want to use the same state even when count becomes 0 because count becomes 0 uh, like you know you go to the same state. Yeah, I mean it is it's a simpler more typical approach of having a sp special state for indicating the end of computation. So, in this state all the signals uh, would be set to in such a value uh, such to such a value that the system would freeze. Okay. The accumulators would not accumulator would not change, wire resistor will not keep unnecessarily keep shifting and so on. Yeah, uh, so quite typically I said uh, we would like to have a state in which we uh, when the system control is in that state we know that system is uh, the computation is done. So, when count becomes 0 we move to that state in which we can disable the accumulator from further change uh, like loading its loading something into itself. We can also disable the counter so that it will remain at 0. So, that even if we have uh, where to decide to go back here the count would have remained at 0 and so on. Okay. Or as a matter of test you might uh, prefer a variation of this instead of this you might uh, feel that this could suffice as it is if count is not 0 it will depend on MSB y and uh, a lot of this signals are specified here. If MSB is 0 then just shift do not add decrement counter enable accumulator and so on and so forth. What else? Uh, shift y left and similarly here and we go to this, we go to this. If count were 0, then we might uh, we might take a like you know we might prefer to use a single state machine. Of course, it will have some inadequacies, but it is not wrong or it like you know it can we can still make it work by like you know generating the control signals as follows we disable the accumulator we disable the counter once we disable the counter the count count is going to stay at zero and uh, the system will keep moving in will keep doing this transition uh, and would keep uh, continue to keep the accumulator disabled continue to keep that counter disabled in which case we know that system would not escape into this count will not get modified to something count will not uh, get updated to non zero and then based on msp some accumulator loading or y shifting will happen so with the help of this kind of thing we uh, this control signal values will ensure that system will loop harmlessly in this state with everything frozen effectively or if you prefer we might do it that this particular way have a special state just the way we had a special state idle to indicate the beginning of computation waiting for some trigger we might we should also we could also have uh, this this is more preferred way of doing it okay so clearly if you are trying to be uh, trying to make it purely combinational there should be some protocol problem not really a problem but something not so clean okay yeah so should be a matter of uh, uh, so so let let's describe the data path in verilog so this will also consolidate help consolidate understanding of how verilog semantics capture the data path as well as the controller so the data path data path is synchronous system right so So, what is happening? If uh, let us let us make use of single cycle controller, if count is not 0, 
or other legs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the logic for updating updation of So, uh, after having seen the data path and this uh, simple finite state machine based controller for ship tire based multiplication, we will just uh, try to capture this in Verilog just to consolidate our understanding of how the semantics of Verilog and how the synthesizer will map it into the circuit that we had drawn. So, let us first look at the this is the controller and let us look at a data path. Uh, yeah, this is the data path. Uh, what are the uh, data storage components on the data path? There is an accumulator, there is a resistor inside a counter which is being updated, there are flip flops in the counter which are basically memory synchronous memory elements. There is also a resistor x which is fortunately not getting updated. Maybe if we have a start state idle state, I mean that is the time x will be loaded from the inputs and there is a shift register for y. Okay whose most significant bit is being named MSBY. Okay. So, we have to see what kind of actions are taking place on Y accumulator and a counter. So, we will capture this in Verilog. So, this is uh, how it would look like. Always at this is the description of data path in Verilog always at positive edge of the clock that is a triggering edge of the clock. If, if the control signal says uh, for enabling accumulator says uh, yes that is there must be we assume that there is a control signal uh, controlling whether the accumulator can be loaded or not. We call it enable accumulator. If enable accumulator has been asserted by the controller then we would look at the output of the controller which is the control signal shift add. If shift add is asserted is true, then accumulator is to be loaded with shifted version of itself plus x. So, that means, we have to compute the addition of uh, the shifted version of accumulator and x and load it into accumulator that is this particular thing. If shift if uh, this accumulator is to be loaded in this current clock cycle, then it would depend on what the value of shift add is. If this is shift add is 1, then x is to be added with the shifted version of accumulator and loaded back into accumulator. That is this particular st statement. Okay. If enable accumulator, if shift add, then accumulator is loaded this way. Else accumulator is loaded only with the shifted version of itself. So, if shift add is 0, then the 0 is rooted to the adder nothing happens just the shifted version of the accumulator is rooted back into the accumulator. So, it effectively means accumulator has been shifted by a single bit. Okay. So, that is the logic for how accumulator is updated. So, that is the logic in this particular block. At Okay. Now, about the counter of course, this is not complete very log code, but main part of it is this. If decrement counter signal is asserted by the controller, then the counter will decrement. Otherwise, counter will stay as its own at its own value. It is like it will have the effect of disabling the counter. Similarly, the shift register is to be modified if is to be updated if the control signal shift y left is asserted then shift register is shifted left by 1 bit otherwise it stays. So, this shift y left is a signal say sent to this this particular shift register. Shift add signal is generated by the controller and is controlling this multiplexer. Enable accumulator signal is it's generated by the controller is controlling the loading of accumulator and decrement count another output of controller is controlling the counter. So, counter is also an part of the data path and it is being controlled by the FSM. Okay. Then this remains to understand how the controller would be generating the control signals which are those? Those are the signals shift add, enable accumulator, shift y left and and decrement count. 
Okay. So, it is the combinational logic for describing the output of controller initially these are the uh, not this initial these are the default values which are going to be changed appropriately in the appropriate conditions. So, if the current state is state loop then if the count is not equal to 0 that means, uh, that is the main part of the loop. Then uh, we will we'll be shifting uh, arranging to sh uh, shift y we will be decrementing the counter at the end of this clock cycle, we will also be enabling the accumulator for loading at the end of this clock cycle. So, all these signals are uh, to be asserted and, but about shift add it would depend on whether MSB is y, M MSB y is uh, non 0, if MSB y is 1 then we will be uh, like you know performing addition of x to the shifted version of the accumulator that is controlled by the signal which is the input to the multiplexer. Else, uh, the shift add will be uh, set to 0, which would mean that 0 will be sent to the adder and which will simply have the effect of only shifting the accumulator by 1 bit. Okay. In the state done, we force this enable accumulator signal to be deasserted, which means that accumulator will not be loaded whatever might be happening in the adder at the end of the at the output of the adder or somewhere else. Similarly, counter will not be will be frozen by setting decrement count to 0. So, counter will not be decrementing, we hope that counter will also not be incrementing, we will have we just assume that we have a specialist counter which only decrements or freezes. So, so on so forth. So, this is an always block describing the combinational logic for output. Okay, output logic of FSM, which is combinational, which depends on current state and the and the status inputs from the data path, like whether count is zero or not, whether MSB of Y is zero or not, right? And we know that these signals are being generated. Whether count is equal to zero or not is generated by taking the output of the counter and having a zero checker. MSB of Y is taken directly from the most significant uh, flip flop of uh, shift register of this. Okay. Yeah, so, this completes uh, our description, I mean the, this can be easily wrapped up in a module and some appropriate declarations of signals. You, as an exercise, you might uh, want to upgrade this controller. Yeah. You might want to upgrade this controller like in the case of GCD to have an idle state, to have a start uh, trigger and to be able to load uh, x new values of x input and y input into x and y. Okay. So, this is assuming that at the uh, like on reset itself we have something in x register and something in y register that is on good enough only for testing, but as a subsystem you would need uh, like you know appropriate input triggers. So, uh, hope uh, like typically you can make use of one state like state idle or state start, then this is the main state and this is the ending state. Okay. And from here again you will go back to that idle state waiting for a start trigger and so on. So, this can be like you know enhanced into more like better protocol for using a multiplier system. Okay. That, uh, that just left us an exercise. We have tried, I tried to illustrate the main points. Uh, and I hope that should suffice.